everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land, please. Finding Wise Gadget Plus. We're doing challenges. Some of them are going okay, some of them are not going okay. I don't know why I'm talking in the voice that that woman uses on Orange is the New Black. Oh, so, but Christopher. Ooh, you'll see we're gonna get married when me and Christopher get out of here. Um. Okay, well, what's the gameplay? Cursed, I believe, is the challenge where every room hurts you. Which actually strikes me with Yum Heart and Child's Heart as not being that bad. It does strike me as also being like an off. <laughs> okay, amazing. Um, sure, even though it doesn't do anything for us. Um, it does also strike me as being like impossible for us to. I guess we should try to minimize the amount of doors we go through, like in terms of backtracking even, but. Um, it also strikes me as making it nearly impossible to get deals with the devil, but considering we're starting with 6 HP, Yum Heart, an okay trinket, which we're not going to replace here, um, we should be fine. I, in fact, I, I don't see any cause for alarm whatsoever. Now, getting uh, active items is not really on my to-do list right now, but apart from that, this doesn't seem that difficult, all things considered. Just make sure you're using Yum Heart at every, you know, available opportunity. Don't take too much damage from the bosses, or from any enemies, if possible. Uh, and, you know, go into the boss room and out as many times as you want. I guess there is a bonus to be had there. Just watch out. You can't be taking damage against the Widow. Taking damage against the Widow is like opening up your day by like almost getting into a traffic accident. Even if there's no consequences for almost getting into an accident, it just puts you... Oh, jeez. It puts you in a funk, doesn't it? And look at us being all, all funky right now. Um, you want to set the tone properly. Did we succeed in that? Nah, not necessarily. However, much to my surprise and much to the game's chagrin and possibly some of the audiences, uh, we're going to get... Four spirit hearts here, which actually gives us a great chance to get a deal with the devil. And I would say, uh, without being overly cocky, because again, we have squandered a couple of challenges thus far, uh, but without being overly cocky, if we're able to get uh, a good to great deal with the devil item, we basically win. We're starting with so much HP. Now the... That hurts. The flip side, although we would have been hurt on the way out anyway, I guess. The flip side is that... It's so good, but Yum Heart is like compulsory right now. Um, allow me to continue. The flip side is that if we get overly aggressive with the deal with the devil, we might be in a tight spot when it comes to our HP. But it's going to have to be like three items for sale. Otherwise, it's almost unfathomable that we could uh, accidentally sell ourselves into a bad position. But we have taken some damage I'm not very pleased with early on here. And a half red heart doesn't do it. Pull a heck of a lot for us. Blighted Ovum should be fine. Wow, never mind. Um, Blighted Ovum might be a, a touch difficult here. But on the bright side, we should be able to get through this A OK. -okay. Hopefully, is my game plan. Please slow down. You move too fast. You gotta make the good things last. Spirit Hearts, enjoy them while they last. Polydactyl, plus two of diamonds. Unlikely to ever be worth much. Dude, I don't know. I think a Thame might be like the keys to the kingdom on this one. I hadn't even thought about this, but items that do things when we get hit seems like not a bad option. Uh, I don't know. What do you think about curse rooms? They're, they're not really, by the way, a Thame sucks. <laughs> I thought that we would carry the, the circle of protection or circle of danger into the next room. Not the case. Um, I think curse rooms without being able to leave through secret rooms are not worth it because Basically, if possible, I would like to minimize my odds or number of moves where I have to go through the same door twice. I want to basically imagine that I'm playing Fidel Dungeon Rescue, and for those of you who didn't watch that, let's look at... Um, well, consider yourselves lucky because I played like a hot garbage in it, but... Um, excuse me? The door's open because I took too long to kill the enemies? That's an insult. I'm gonna... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take advantage of that and leave. Because I'm, I'm a savvy individual. Um, we uh, That was a game in which you can't... It, it's like Snake. You can't touch your own tail. I mean, in Snake, if you touch your own tail, you die. In Fidel, you just can't do it to begin with. So, key please. Key please. That's a penny, not a key. 
we could try to gamble a little bit. The gamble worked, which almost makes me madder. Because all I, that was a bad one, though. All I'm trying to do is create a deal with the devil, essentially. Uh, and we're not quite, I think, going to be able to do it here. So you know what? Take another stab at it. It actually continues to work, much to my surprise. Uh, I'd love some luck so I could actually get some consumables. Like, I don't want to walk back to the item room here. I probably will. Oh, now we've done it. I probably will now that we have no real reason not to. Uh, and we have that key backing us up. But yeah, we probably want to avoid doing this long term. So, okay, I'm just going to catch myself in the middle of making a stupid mistake. Try not to... Jeez, the item rooms have been like predominantly pretty trash. Um, try not to walk through too many rooms that you have already gone through. I know that this time we've made a mistake here. We've sacrificed essentially two and a half hearts to make it happen. Um, but we're hard programmed in Isaac to think that it's a good idea to always go to item rooms. You may have overvalued it there. But dude, I'm losing my mind that we're still at 3.5 damage. No offensive orbitals. You know, there's still, um, there's still goodness in this world. But we're, we're at default damage, default speed, default DPS. We've got a Thame. Which is, I mean, not doing anything for us, but... In theory, could. I still like our odds here. If we can up our luck stat, make a Thame pop for us, pick up some actual consumables, and, and uh, pick them up in a timely fashion rather than having to walk back for them, I'd be a happy camper. Please jump. Perfect time for that jump. Just ask Tom Petty. Wait, Van Halen? Yeah, Tom Petty is free fallen. Van Halen sang jump. Bad damage on my part, but... Uh, I think it was smart to not rush in there and take extra damage just trying to make a Thame work. And in 20 or 30 years, people will be dead and we'll be uh, living the high life, uh, hitting them sly for the C-notes, as they said in Camp Lowe's Magnum Opus Lucini. Bit of a risky situation there. Dude, I need you to stop jumping because every jump I have to like run the trajectory of these two eyeballs through my freaking, you know, mental function again here to try to figure out if we're going to be okay. Do 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 do. Uh, just bounce. Spin that record, baby. Go do do do. Pretty easy song to remember most of the lyrics for. Um All right. So, we're kind of we're, we're below equilibrium right now in terms of like the damage that we're taking versus the HP that we're receiving so we got to be very very careful on the other hand I'm as excited as I've ever been for our ability to actually like shoot enemies effectively and every time we get a half spirit heart or half red heart I should say that means this room is free to go to in fact it's more than free because we're gonna get a one quarter of a heart out of Yum Heart as well, just for going into the room, assuming it's a regular sized room. Still poor damage, but we're working on it. We got a key, which means we can go to the item room on time. We're actually gonna get bombs for like the second time ever on this run. If I could also get you, because I hate to do it because it's like tedious, but if you could also shoot some bombs my way, like uh, that Lenny Kravitz song. Just so we could, uh, okay, well, you know, I'll, you could just be an ass, I guess, is the alternative. Um, we're going to place some bombs. We're going to open the stone chest because I value the stone chest. We got a bomb out of it, so I consider that worthwhile. And we'll try to just keep moving here. Um, save our other bomb, if possible, for a, a, a tinted rock or, you know, damage against an enemy or something like that. Get out of here. Two of Diamonds has done nothing for us, but the Lover's card is majestic. Now, <laughs> honestly, like, it's so not worth it, but sure. I will walk on the spikes to get Pupula Duplex. Never say your boy NL doesn't make sacrifices. Being a little facetious. Two of Diamonds, by the way, is, is functionally worth exactly 0% right now, but... I'm starting to feel the pressure a little bit. The lover's card I'm going to save for, like, last-ditch uh, scenario if we uh, can slash have to. 
Big rooms are actually a blessing for us because we take half damage on the way in. This better unlock something decent too. This is this is a non-trivial challenge. A fun challenge, but a non-trivial one. I do wonder if like you could accidentally find yourself unable to ever beat the not, not ever, but I think there might be runs for which the curse challenge is actually mathematically impossible to beat. Like what if you have a big floor, there's not many big rooms, and you uh you just never get red hearts, either due to having like a negative one luck stat or, you know, for whatever reason. I know you still have yum heart, but that, it doesn't seem like that much is what I'm trying to get at it, essentially. If you just hit a bad run of like 20 rooms in a row without a red heart, you might be, uh, you might be out of luck, even if you take zero damage against enemies. It's probably pretty unlikely, but I think the chance is a theoretical possibility at least. But anyway, hopefully we won't have to worry about that. I mean, we're only, uh, we're only like one floor. Oh, that hurts me. Two floors away from success here. Excuse me. Excuse me, though. Thank you. And we still have this lover's card kind of like buffing us here. So the hollow is the perfect enemy to take damage against and try to create a, uh, a demon heart. We didn't get one, but we did speed up the boss fight immensely. We got a free red heart container and a small bit of extra damage. Not a ton, but enough to keep us going here. And as always, I kind of, uh, I apologize as much as is necessary for the fact that it's a commentary focused run, but this is like a commentary focused challenge right now. Or wait, like game focused might be the way to describe it. You know, it, it's not easy to be -E me. That's five for fighting. Uh, screw Mary Kill, the PG-13 rated version of the game, including Intercourse and Murder. Five for Fighting, Ben Folds Five, and English Boy Band Five, most famous for the song, Baby, when the lights go out, yeah, every single... <laughs> you know, oh, you don't remember Five? Dude, they were huge back in the day. Hurt me, please. Thank you, thank you. Oh, he's making Jim Cramer style mad money, and look at this. Finally, a good use for our bombs. That door might already be open. Like, we might have no need to, uh... To open it ourselves, but... Get dusted. We don't have a need to open it ourselves. So we are lucky we saved the bomb. Uh, and we might actually be able to buy something in our shop for once, even. Shielded tears. I don't think we fire fast enough for that to be great right now. Um... Dude, it's actually an okay smelt. Oh, you go PhD, no doubt. Also gave us like full HP. Yeah, I'm not stoked about shielded tears because our rate of fire is bad enough that we, if we encounter enemies that shoot at us, it's going to be kind of annoying to have half of our shots be destroyed by them, but it is what it is. I don't think it's a bad pickup. I mean, I had the choice to not pick it up and I chose to pick it up that, you know, there's some kind of logical fallacy in assuming that that means it's automatically good, I suppose, but at the same time, how, how bad could it be? We've got uh, an outside chance of a deal with the devil here even, but to be honest with you, we're one floor away from beating the, the challenge here and never seeing it again. So what's my ideal outcome? Dude, let me fight war right now. And then, uh, how are you not doing any damage to each other? Let me fight war. Let me get a cube of meat and then just let me walk into every enemy on the next floor. You might say that it turns this run like a little skillless, but I, I very much disagree. I just think... You know, we, we've already kind of slightly proved ourselves in this run. Not to toot our own horn, but, you know, our first few item rooms were, were not actually just bad. They were actively deleterious. If we had taken any of those items, we probably would be, uh, we would be dead already. This is not war. And in fact, uh, it is an extremely annoying enemy. But if I can just get him to live in the fire there... Might be a little bit happier. I also want to save my bombs because if we can get... Oh, that's bad. If we can get two bombs, uh, two bombs is enough. Oh, that was so dumb. Two bombs is enough to open up a, a secret room. 
and then get into an item room if it's adjacent. But we got HP and we got a chance to get more HP when we get hurt. So really, at this point, we're probably like 100% invested in this uh, potentially suboptimal strategy to just walk into enemies. And I think we're like good to go at this point. Crack dice is like totally fine. I actually think I'm going to go to my item room because I can. That might have been a poor play there, but we should be fine now. Especially attack fly is an orbital. It's not Cuba Mead, but it's an orbital. So uh, just get the lover's card ready in case things go terribly, terribly wrong. We're walking into enemies, trying to get demon hearts. If we don't get demon hearts, that's fine. Um, old bandage, you know, the dream is that that'll pay out eventually. If it doesn't pay out, a Thame might pay out. If that doesn't pay out, well, then we can start to be a little cheesed, I guess. But it looks good. Oh, dude. Why not? All right. Let's go to town. So a Thame is not going to be worth too much against Mom's foot, but old bandage could still uh, do some damage. Well, uh, never mind. The Athame damage is actually like our single greatest damage dealing source next to maybe the attack fly. But, um, I mean, the extra demon heart potential is not worth much. Dude, easy enough. This is a quick one. Grab this. What do we got in here? I mean, we're not going to do it, but <laughs> the virus would have been a nice touch. That was actually surprisingly easy, and the credit card is well worth it, even if I do tend to misuse it. So let's go down to our next thing. When life gives you lemons. This is our uh, all lemon items, right? Number one. It's just lemon party and uh, lemon mishap, actually. My not, this is like a more traditional run, so just like be focused here. This allows us to use lemon mishap once per room. No reason to use it there, obviously. Yeah, this, I mean, this is a good start. If we had this start as Isaac, or as Eden, I should say, we would be like, hey, you know what? Cool run. Would I have said this is exactly the same as the Life Gives You Lemons run? Probably not, because I did Life Gives You Lemons once for 20 minutes in 2014. I don't know why it sounds like it's a harrowing drug story, but, you know, it, it's been purged from my mental queue since then. I don't remember absolutely everything that's happened to me, unless it's uh, related to a movie that came out between the year 1996 and 2004, in which case I remember it all so vividly and I wish I could purge it. Okay, what do we got? Experimental treatment. Worse luck, but much better damage. Oh, worse HP as well, but I'm gonna say that this is a, a pretty big get for us. And the fact that this one only goes to mom's heart is like... Or sorry, only goes to mom's foot even. Is, is kind of surprising to me because it's a fairly easy challenge, all things considered. Starting with 3 HP and a good spacebar item, plus a bunch of like augments for that. It's not a good spacebar item, but it's a it's made good by the fact that uh, you know we have all these augmenters going along with it. Health upgrade doesn't earn either. It looks like we're going to be set here, more or less. And I recognize that my cockiness might get me into trouble, but... Let's, uh, you know, put that theory to the test. Right there. To defeat the Huns. People are always asking, you know, what's your favorite Disney song? Everyone always goes, oh, a whole new world. A part of your world. Just can't wait to be king. Circle of life. Can't you feel the love tonight? You'll be in my heart by Phil Collins. That's a Dan Giesling special right there. But the, uh... Real answer, Duel of the Fates. From Star Wars Episode One. You might say, how is that Disney? That's Lucasfilm. Sorry to tell you, Disney owns the rights to the Lucasfilm catalog now. And as a result, Duel of the Fates is technically the correct answer. I was trying to technically find the most pedantic theme that I could. Uh... In fact, if you wanted, if you want to use that anecdote with your friends to make them angry at you and like you a little bit less, don't say Duel of the Fates, because you might have to explain that that's the song from when Darth Maul fights Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn in Episode 1. Instead, just say Star Wars theme. You could even say Cantina theme if you want. Okay. Dude, we've been getting Goathead on, like, all of these. I'm going to take... Goathead, because it's good, but I'm not going to take Book of Sin, because I don't like it that much. Dude, I've been getting so many emails with emojis in the title recently. It's driving me 
crazy. Not because I dislike emojis, but because I I know what you're doing. You're trying to make your emails stand out more by putting emojis in them. DoorDash sends me these emails with emojis. It says, like, hot new restaurants in Vancouver. I don't need an emoji for that. I'm never going to click on it. Oh, a fish tail can be good here. I'm not trying to be needlessly petty. I feel like everybody, you know, nobody's a huge fan of emojis necessarily, except for, like, you know, everybody's mom. Um, I use emojis from time to time just because I find them ironic, I guess. It's an ironic use of emojis. I know, something, something, the emoji movie. Look, I'm not Jax Films, okay? Take that stuff over to Jax Films channel. YouTube.com slash Northern Line. Make sure to click subscribe. Um... What was I gonna say? I was gonna say, don't put emojis in the email. This is my work email, mom. <laughs> no, it's my work email, DoorDash. I don't need fire emoji. Hot new restaurants in Vancouver. I'm aware of what the word hot is, okay? It's embarrassing to me. Got another one that says, would you be interested in reviewing games for the Nintendo Switch? It's got smiley face emojis in the, in the subject line. I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm interested because Nintendo, you know, they're jerks about it sometimes. But yeah, if you got, like, review copies you'd love to send over, that's fine. But I don't understand why we got to bring emojis into this. I was fine, you know, just using the English language and other various Unicode-based characters. But at the same time, I just, just, I, I just worry that maybe a month from now I'm going to look at my email inbox and it's just going to be like, Sad face emoji. Your request for blah blah has been declined. Then, like, bomb emoji, peach emoji, eggplant, moisture, etc., etc. That's right, I know how millennials talk. Come on, come on, listen to millennials. Oh, there is a deal with the devil down there, I almost missed it. Come on, come on, let me hear millennials talk. That's Money Talk by ACDC. You wouldn't know it, it's not a song for millennials, it's a song for badass MFers like yours truly. In the Pact. Wait, it's the Pack. Not the Pact. The Pact is an item in Isaac. Well, this run is like... Set. I'm actually, I feel like self-conscious and... If I'm being honest, maybe even like a mild bit of embarrassment that... Uh, I'm doing this run. I'm not saying it's beneath me, but... It's almost like... It's like being... A team in the NHL and having a game against the 2016-2017 Vancouver Canucks. It's like, okay, I mean, it's on the schedule. It's got to be done or Gary Bettman's going to fine us. But, like, do you want to just resign right now? Because, like, unless Bo Horvat pops off a hat trick, you guys stand no chance. It goes doubly for the draft lottery, unfortunately. Oh. Well, this is like the Athame episode. Which, honestly, is fine by me. I like Athame. I don't like that we have minus one luck, but the odds of that having an impact one way or the other are probably pretty low right now. So that rerolls everything on the ground. We should take uh, Blood of the Martyr. It's a very good damage upgrade in this case, actually. Uh, reroll everything else. We don't even need the golden key. Yeah, it was fine. Um... If you're sick of challenges, by the way, I, for one, I feel you. Some of them are a little bit too easy, some of them are a little too hard, and some of them are just kind of like artificially weird. What I would encourage you to do is just relax a little bit, take a long form approach to the situation. If you hate the challenges, there's only a month of them. And once they're done, they're done. If you love the challenges, this is a high concentration of challenges. You're either, you know, you're getting a full month of them in one spurt here. Which is a word I don't like using, but did use in this situation. Spurt. Either way, um... I forgot what I was gonna say. Moldy bread's pretty solid, though. But, um, yeah, you know, the, the, no one's getting a better or worse deal. There's gonna be a static number of challenges, is what I'm, I suppose, trying to get at here. Now, if you could... This is the, like, already... Probably the longest fight against the hollow I've ever had. <laughs> For the hollow fight to last more than 45 seconds is like a, a serious problem. Okay, grab Dark Bum. And then get the heck out of Dodge. 
We got two floors left to go. And it's crazy, but it's going to be a little bit on the short side as far as the video goes, despite having two challenges in it. I mean, it's not. it might not even be a month of challenges now that I think about it. Obviously, there's some we have to redo, but... Hey, come this way, please. Oh, you're, you're burning me up inside. I will absolutely take Bob's brain. I'm like Zane starved right now. And I'm not talking about Zane Malik of everybody's favorite boy band One Direction, okay? Although I am starved of him as well. Harry Styles, nice dramatic turn in the 2017 Christopher Nolan film Dunkirk. I haven't seen it yet. I, I will see it at some point, probably. It'll take me a while. And I, I do mean a while. But it will happen at some point. I'm looking forward to October. Go to the multiplex, see Thor Ragnarok if it's not garbage. I'm inclined. I, I really like Taika Waititi. I know that sounds like... If you're not familiar with the man's name, you're like, surely there must have been some kind of mistake. No. Not true. What we did in the shadows, Hunt for the Wilder People, lovely, but who knows, dude? The Thor movies don't have a great track record. I get they're going in a different direction, but anyway, I don't know how many Isaac episodes I can do where I talk about Thor specifically, so we should probably <laughs> tone it down a little bit. I should see Dunkirk. There's been a lot of good movies this summer, though. I still haven't seen a Wonder Woman yet. I really thought I was going to be able to get in there. Uh, they got a I, controversial opinion. Make less good movies. Make more junk, dude. No one gets mad at you when you haven't seen junk. They just go, hey, nice nice job avoiding the junk. And I say, thank you. And then they say, what you going to do with all that junk, all that junk inside that trunk? And I say, will I am, get out of here. That's harassment. I'm trying to go down a size right now. You're making me feel very self-conscious. Alright, so easy orbital. We played like trash on this floor, but we're also going to finish the entire challenge within like 12 minutes. So, uh, I don't think we have too much bounce to complain. Hey, look, it's the pack. Get it? <laughs> I'm going to try to add like a little bit of risk into this by taking every single item, despite the fact that it's really just artificially introducing a level of danger that is completely unnecessary. But hey, dude. Artificially, artificially in introducing a level of danger where there is none is my middle name. And boy, dude, I gotta tell you, it makes it hard to fill out forms on the internet. Do you think Zendaya from the Spider-Man film, uh, you may know it, it's called Spider-Man, uh, ever has problems with online forms? Like, what if you don't have a last name? And I know the obvious answer, because they they always go, last name required. You know, whenever you, you order something. I know you're going to say she has a last name. Okay, but hear me out. What if she doesn't? What if her name is just Zendaya? Not Zenyatta. Different situation there. Equally talented, though, in the right hands. That came across a little awkward. Um... I'm a Mercy main anyway. That's... I don't play Overwatch. Let's be real here. We're about to win. Despite the fact that I sort of tried to lose. Let's go. It's the easiest money ever made. You know what, dude? Yas. Give me Guppy's Collar. Give me the seven... Seals. I think I'm gonna leave. Uh... Um, <laughs> I... Whoo! Okay, a little bit of a brain fart there, but easy wins, dude! Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.